Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now Paul says, my conscience clear. He says, yet I am not acquitted, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4 again. He says, I am not acquitted by this, but the one that, that acquits me, that really is my examiner, he said, is the Lord. And he says, therefore, do not go on passing judgment before the time. He says, but wait, wait until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the things that are hidden in the darkness, and he'll disclose the motives of men's hearts. And then each man's praise will come to him, not from men, where, where's the praise going to come from? From God. Some, you guys probably all know this, but not everyone was raised in church, so they don't have this understanding that someday we're going to stand before our maker. And everything we've done, and it, we'll find out later in the same book, every deed we do, good or evil, we're going to give an answer for. Why did you do that? Now some people say, don't, don't talk about that. It makes me a little squeamy, you know, like, uncomfortable. I'm going to have to answer up for everything I do. Yes, you are. And I suggest all the stuff you've done bad, you take it to the Lord now and get it dealt with. You know, for, yeah, Lord, forgive me and get the slate wiped clean before we stand before him. But see, as believers, we can do that. And we can do that daily. I don't know about you. I just do it moment by moment because I'm pretty much in the doghouse as the day progresses. So it's just better to, you know, to just do it as I go. So that I can be like Paul and say, you know what? At this moment, I'm conscious of, you know, I've got a clear conscience. All the stuff I've done wrong, I've, I've asked the Lord to take it away. But to the person who, who thinks, doesn't matter. Paul would say, you might not think so now, but you're going to stand before God someday and give an answer. You will. Every one of us will. So hopefully your answer will be, um, I, I asked Jesus to step in for me here. My proxy is Jesus. He paid for me. I signed up with him. You know, I put my faith in what he did. That's what saves you, by the way, is putting your faith in the finished work of Christ. So he goes on, he says, now these things, brethren, Paul says, I, I, I figuratively have applied, he says, to Apollos and to, uh, and to myself for your sakes, so that in us you would learn not to exceed what is written so that no one of you will become arrogant in behalf of the other. And the, you know, he says, I'm using myself as an example. I'm just a slave. Apollos is just a slave. Quit holding us up like we're some, you know, super leaders in the church, something special of God. We're just men, and, and let's, ke let's keep it how it is. And he says, and, and then he goes on, he says, who regards you as superior? And he says, what, did you, what, what do you have that you did not receive. And if you didn't, if you did not receive it, then, or, or, or I'm sorry, if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? You know, it was a gift you got. You got that stuff. Some of you have gifts, like superior gifting of intellect in some area. Maybe you're really good at math or science. or That was a gift from God. Not everyone has that gift. Some, of, some people are jealous of you. You know, and others of you have other gifts. You're, you're gifted artistically or you're gifted with, with abilities, that, I mean, physical abilities. And people are just like, in awe, wow, I wish I could do that. But I got a question. What gift that you got did you not receive? It was all given to you. Now, some people don't want to acknowledge that. But see, the Bible teaches us that God is the giver of all good things. So every good gift we have it was given to us. And Paul's trying to get them back to who? To God. Get, get your eyes off of men. Look back to God, the giver of all things, and keep the perspective. Everything you got, you got given from him. Sam only sings so good because God gifted him to sing like that. We, we, we all have gifts. And, and, we, and, and, and we just have to recognize we don't boast what we're so good. We boast that the giver of the gift was so kind to give me that gift. There's nothing wrong with saying, I have a gift. 
You just have to acknowledge where did you get it. You got to give the credit to whom the credit is due. You know, some some people come up and go, Pastor, oh, you explained that in a way I never. I read that and I couldn't figure it out. And wow, what a you have a real gift of teaching. I said, well, thanks, but really the credit goes to the giver of the gift. I just use the gift. He gave me the gift to teach. I just use it, and I use it all the time. And Paul Paul would tell you, whatever gift you have, wh- what are you supposed to do with it? Sit on it, right? Don't I, well, God gave me this, but I don't really want to use it, right? No. Whatever gift you have, what if your gift's hospitality? You said that gift. When people come over, you're the one going, here, have a little something to eat. Here, have a little bite. Here, have a little, here, you need, you're, you're thirsty. Here. And I know a lady has that gift galore, that, that lady right there, my wife. She is so gifted at hospitality. Like, I'd be like, the cupboard's over there, get your own cup. You know? She'd be over there getting them a drink and, you know, getting them a plate of food. And I'd be like, Show them the fridge, find something, you know. And, and, but she has the, the gift of hospitality. Now, whatever gift you have from God, Paul would say, exercise your gift. I like that he calls it exercise because, you know, when I think of exercise, I know it takes effort to do. When, when, you know, some people just think gifts don't require any effort. That's not true. Do you know how much effort it takes to prepare Bible studies, to learn the chapters, inside out and learn all the words and look up the Greek and the Hebrew and it's not like a this is like no problem no nothing whatever gift you have you gotta you gotta put the effort in you gotta and and you know what the neat thing about that he says exercise that gift is that you know when you start off exercising I don't know about you all but we have a we have an one of those um iron iron men can you know friends that does the whole run and bike and swim thing and she's um from brazil and she wrote on her facebook wall she said, most people won't say this but she she put it on there she had taken a break for a while and she she wrote i just want to tell you in case some of you ever think oh you know just because we did it and then we took a break that we just jump right back in she goes the truth is it hurts to get back into it you know you got to build back up i have to work back into it. I have to build up the miles again. I have to build up the length of the swim. I have to, and it's painful. Jan's like, I really appreciate her honesty because, you know, for someone, you know, uh, us weekend warriors, you, you try to do a little extra swim or a little extra run and you're like, man, this hurts. And here's this person who does it like professionally and then says she took a break and then just getting back to doing it hurts. She's saying the truth. When you work out, you can get sore. When you use your spiritual gifts, it's a workout. And some people, they're not thinking that, like, hey, this is going to take some effort. They just think, oh, it's a gift. It'll come easy. No, what if I gave you a gift of a bicycle? You can still got to pedal, right? And if you haven't pedaled for a while, guess what? <laughs> You're going to get sore. You're going to find... Whoa, that, where'd that muscle? It's been hibernating, you know? I can feel it. You might not see it yet, but you know it's there. The next day when you're going, oh, yeah, it's there, right there. I, it's somewhere inside. It really hurts, you know? I rode 20 miles. You rode 20 miles your first day back? Two would be better, you know? Edge in. But when you start off with your spiritual gifts, guys, it takes effort. And some people come to me and go, Pastor, you know, I thought God was gifting me to do this and I tried it and it was really hard. I think I'll quit. And I would urge you just like that gal wrote on her Facebook, just because it makes you sore, don't quit. Just because it's taking effort, don't quit. You got a gift, use it. Because then, as you continue to use it, you, guess who gets stronger? You. You get stronger in your faith. You get stronger in the Lord as you exercise your gifts. So use them. Paul says, but remember, the gift you have, you only have it because God gave it to you. Don't get all arrogant about it. I'm so good. I have this gift. No, God is so good. He gave me the gift. I just use it. I'm very grateful for his gifts. How about you? Any Amen? Anybody else grateful that God gives us gifts? This is something we just need to remember. We are given these things because of a good God.
Now next week we're going to pick up here at verse 8, and we'll go to the end of the chapter, and we'll see that these guys in Corinth, they were actually doing better off, we would say, than Paul. I mean, he's going to say, you guys are rich, you're filled, you know, you have food to eat, you're doing well in life. And by comparison, I'm just an apostle serving the Lord. I'm a slave, and I'm working with my hands, and I'm scratching by, you know, basically he's saying, like in status of life, the Corinthians were doing what we'd call, you know, socially on the, on the uh, what, what financial level and everything, they were better off. Paul's like, you guys are better off than I am as an apostle. I'm just, I'm just counted as, well, just a fool. Really, he says, for Christ's sake. To you, I seem foolish because I'm not really investing in the world. I'm investing in God's kingdom. Yet the Corinthians, did they have materialism in Corinth? Yeah, they had it down. So next, keep that in mind as you read the rest of this chapter to prepare for next week. They had what we would call financial security. They were in a very good um, place as far as world trade. You know, Corinth was a hub, a lot of, of commerce coming and going. And so prosperity was there. But unfortunately, spiritual prosperity was still in its infancy. And Paul has to address some of the things that come along with that. That you know, Sometimes when you have so much physical stuff, you become, how do I say, uh, arrogant. Like, I have it all. And I don't need anything because, you know, what can you give me that I don't already have? And Paul's got to deal with that attitude. And, you know, I think it really addresses our culture today in America. This letter really applies well to, to just as a whole to our nation compared to the rest of the world. We're, we're the ones that have, well, we have more than anyone else. More cars per household, more, you know, more properties, more money in the bank. I mean, in other places in the world, they can have $2 to their name. And that's their annual income. And we're like, two bucks? That's not even enough to get a Starbucks, you know? There's nothing. Well, we'll see what Paul says to keep the balance for the attitude next week as we continue this beautiful passage of Scripture. So read ahead for me, would you? And, uh, and we'll come back to this next week. If you have time to come out on Tuesday night to the Regency, we're doing the book of Colossians, and uh, it's really encouraging and we're also in chapter uh, 4, 3 and 4, the end of 3, 4. So it's kind of doing Corinthians and Colossians. And I'm seeing a lot of cool ties, uh, how the messages intertwine between the two. So you need a little extra boost for your faith this week. Come and join us at 6.30. 6.30 till 8 on the first ground level at the Regency. You walk through the, the foyer as you come in and the glass doors and pass through the foyer. And then there's a second set of glass doors and it opens up into the big uh, lanai area by the pool side. So that's where we are, and we make a huge long table, lots of room for everyone to come out and study more in the Bible. Get encouraged in your faith. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So may, may you be able to hear what you needed to hear today, something to help you keep your focus, keep your eyes on the Lord. And, uh, and keep looking to him. And just remember, we're just all slaves. How many of you are also slaves besides me? We just got a whole bunch of servants, right? We're just here to serve. So whatever gift you have, use it this week to help serve somebody. And you'll see yourself. You might get spiritually worked out a little, but you'll, but you'll grow stronger. In the end, you will be stronger. That's what I desire for you, that we all would grow strong in our faith. We, we, because we got to use our gifts for the Lord. So let's pray. Father, thanks so much for your word, for the richness that it has for us to look to, to be reminded of you and your son. And I just pray, if anyone doesn't know the sweet grace that we're talking about, your love and your finished work for forgiveness for our sins, I just pray today you would help their ears to hear how much you love them, how much you want to wash away their sins. And Father, we just ask that you would draw them to you that they could receive that sweet forgiveness and that complete, complete washing. As all of us need, Lord, we just even ask right now, Lord, wash away all of our shortcomings from this week and cleanse us. Just make us clean and filled just to a fresh overflowing of your spirit to strengthen us and refresh us for this upcoming week, Lord. Give us what we need 
right now, as we get ready to go off to, to follow you into this next week, we ask, it, we ask for your hand of protection on our land, especially over our islands with this crazy Korean guy. I just ask that you would keep him from, from sending his missiles to harm us in Jesus' name. And there, anyone that agreed with me said, Amen. Amen. You know, guys, prayer is very powerful. We need to keep praying. As you know, it says, as the last days, when you see these things begin to come to pass, wars, rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, earthquakes, we have all the stuff. What are we supposed to do? Look up. Our redemption draws nigh. So soon enough, guys, you're going to not have to hear me preach no more about Jesus. You're going to be looking at him. You know? And that's going to be the fun part. I'll be like, I told you. I always, I always would say, hey, you know, it says his coming's in the cloud. So last night it was pouring. I was thinking, Lord, you could come in the morning. We wouldn't have to set up. And uh, just, uh, you know, spare, <laughs> spare. Uh, well, you know, I'm just being honest here. I, I mean, anyone would be willing to go to heaven with me right now if the Lord called us? I mean, if, if, the, if, a, if the cloud over there parted and a, and a trump blew and the Lord appeared and said, come here. And we were caught up to meet him. And, and, and it says in that moment, how many know this from 1 Thessalonians 5.19? It says, we will be caught up to meet the Lord and this corruptible body is going to change. How, how fast? A twinkle of an eye. Yeah, a twinkle, not even a blink. A twinkle is the, the speed that light refracts off your eyeball. That little glint. That's fast. That's how fast you get to be put into a new body made by God. This old thing will be like a shell. I don't, some people ask me, the kids are like, so will our old body fall down, right? And our spirit gets clothed by a new body by God, just like instant change, or how does it work? And they, they, that's a good question, right? I mean, I think it's a good question. I go, well, what about Jesus' old body? Anyone ever thought about this? We don't have his old body. We have him. But, but in heaven, in heaven, there's only one person with a flawed body. He has holes in his hands, a hole in his side, right? Because he's seen as the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. The rest of us get these perfect bodies. And here's Christ with the reminder of what he did when he paid for our sins. In his glorified body. Now I know when he appeared after his resurrection to the disciples. He was walking with them. And they were all bummed out. Oh man, they killed Jesus. He's like, what, what's the matter? Why are you guys so bummed out? And he's in his glorified body. But see, it says they were prevented from recognizing him. I think this glorified body is going to be pretty cool. I, I think we're going to pull off stuff we didn't even think about. You know, be walking with someone that would be like, they're not even perceiving it's you. You know, we could like maybe, I don't know, put on a mustache or whatever. Though. They won't know it's me. And then, no chance, there's no mustache. <laughs> what? Come on, whatever. The Lord, the Lord could put us in a way that they just don't get it. But then, you remember when he took the bread and he blessed it at the table? And as soon as, as, soon as he did it, they went, wait a minute, there's one guy that only does it that way. And it, their eyes, it says, were open. They recognized, it's the Lord, he's resurrected. And then he vanished from their sight. Those glorified bodies are cool, man. You can vanish. You can like pop up, disappear. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds like a lot of fun to me. I could have some fun with this. You know, has anyone else ever dreamed about this kind of stuff that you could, you know, in a new body, you could just like be here, poof, and then over on the moon, poof, and then over, I mean, who's to say how far you can go, right? I mean, they're glorified bodies. Jesus, Jesus, the sky parted, and he ascended right in front of them, and he was seated in the sky right there, took his seat at the right hand of God. Did he have an oxygen mask, you know? You're going above 13,000 feet. You need a breathing apparatus. No. I mean, who's to say? Glorified bodies can probably go even to the moon or anywhere. I don't know about you, but I'm digging this idea. Like, 
This is good. So we're supposed to look up because we have a great hope. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless. <laughs>